Welcome back to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Yule, and today I'm joined, uh, and I'm super excited to have you on here, but Tim Grimes, who is the editor of the book, The Wealth Mindset. Uh, he is a writer of several best-selling uh, stress management guides on Amazon, and uh, I'm super excited to have you on the show today, man. Thank you, Jesse, for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Now, if you haven't heard of this book called The Wealth Mindset, uh, it has been a super powerful book and super impactful for me, uh, but you actually had the pleasure to edit this, right? Correct, yeah. Um, this material is uh, by Neville Goddard, uh, who was a metaphysical, um, these days we usually, we would probably label him like a new age teacher from the middle of the 20th century. He taught from, uh, you know, the 1930s until about 1972 when he died. Um, and he conveys stuff that we would consider, you know, new agey or I guess spiritual inner work in a way that you and myself and I think many, many other people, um, have just been blown away by because it's so different than how we usually hear about these concepts. He, he approaches it in a very practical yet eloquent way. So I've, um, I've published several of his, of his works, of his talks and of some of his, you know, best writings on Amazon over the last five years. And the wealth mindset is um, a collection of, of talks he gave in, I think 1953. Okay. And it's a very short guide. Um, I think it's just about 60 pages. And it's short for a reason. It's short because on every page, uh, there is some nuggets of, of wisdom that, um, quite frankly, you have to read more than once <laughs> um, to, to understand a lot of the time. So um, it was a lot of fun to edit, and it's been a lot of fun to, to share the book with, um, you know, at this point, thousands of readers over the last couple of years since it's been published. Yeah. And I, you know, reading it, uh, like you read it once, twice, three times. And it seems like every time, you know, I kind of consider it kind of like a gold mine. It's like the deeper you did dive into it, the more gold you're actually getting out of it. Um, so it's, it's really been kind of a, a powerful book. And I think depending on where you're at in life, you know, you could get something out of it today where, you know, two years, three years, five years from now, you could get something completely different out of reading the exact same thing. Um, what it like, how long have you studied uh, Neville Goddard and kind of what got you into to this? Yeah. Um, so I found out about Neville, I think, in not that long ago, about 2013 or maybe even the beginning of 2014. Um, and my background is in, uh, alternative mind, body, uh, Zen kind of far out mind, body stuff, um, which I did not do as a living. I'm not, uh, you know, a, a licensed therapist or anything like that. Um, I'm just somebody who always was very interested in the mind, body relationship, um, interested in spirituality, what spirituality meant, how I could get better and feel better, how I could feel less stressed. Um, and in my 20s, I, I lived at a Zen center for a year right after college. And I was kind of like constantly searching for like magical spiritual solutions. Um, and I was always kind of, you know, I, I went to film school. I was always kind of artsy. I never really fit in, in any job or anything like that. So I struggled a lot in my twenties as I think a lot of people do, um, for sure. those reasons. Um, and in my late twenties, I kind of had an epiphany, which was that a lot of the quote unquote spiritual work I was doing was actually holding me back. It was like just it was like a cycle of kind of like the same old spiritual mumbo jumbo. And there was some good stuff there, but there was a lot more crap. Um, 
I think you know who Byron Katie is, right, Jesse? Um, yeah, I know she is very well. Yeah. Um, I was exposed to her stuff and it, it like blew my mind when I think I was like 27 or 28 years old. And that was like a major transition point for me. Um, I had been doing real estate for a while. Um, but like something just like clicked for me inwardly um, when I encountered Byron Katie and the work. Um, and I became like, I became like a more motivated and practical person. Um, and I know this is kind of a long answer, but I'm trying to give you the backlog of why I like Neville so much. Um, it, so what happened was I, I kind of looked at myself in a different way after I encountered the work of Byron Katie. And in my early thirties, I was still doing real estate and I was just, I was sick of it because it, it did, I didn't find it fulfilling at all. Um, and you know, I, I started going to different like business seminars and stuff like that, just to try to figure out what I could do next in my life that that was more conducive to how I felt inwardly. Um, and that's how I stumbled upon Neville. It was through, um, you know, six degrees of separation. You know, I think I read Think and Grow Rich or something like that, which is the okay. famous Napoleon Hill book. And then I think I found Wallace Waddles, who, um, The Science of Getting Rich. I don't, I don't know if you know that book or not. That's another like self help classic, really good. Um, and uh, then Amazon recommended this guy Neville or something like that, you know, and also bots or whatever. So I looked at one of his books and like I started reading it. And I was no longer interested in spiritual, like really spiritual what we think of as spiritual stuff because I'd gone through that spiritual trip before, you know what I mean? And, and kind of come out the other side. And so he was using spiritual language, but then he was saying something practical about how your, your thinking directly creates your reality. And it just, I mean, excuse my French, but it, you know, it blew me the fuck away. Uh, I was, yeah. I was like, why? has nobody ever told me about this guy before like this this fucking guy is he, he makes like thinking grow rich seem like a joke like he's so much more eloquent and um precise and practical in his application of um how to use your mind and your imagination to create better things happening for you than anybody else i had ever encountered Right. So I was, I was blown away. Um, and I also was dumbfounded as to why I had never heard of this guy before. Um, and one of the things I had started to do to, to, to make money and transition out of real estate was, um, get into self publishing. And I realized that there was a real lack of good material on Neville available online, um, in book form and in ebook form. And, um, it snowballed from there. Um, I put out a lot of Neville stuff, edited a lot of Neville stuff, um, and got a lot of really, really, really positive feedback from that. Um, and that's kind of led to um, what I do now, which is talk about these concepts with people on a practical level. And it's some of Neville stuff, but also some of it's just all the stuff I've learned and, and you know, how I think people can practically apply it in their lives. Sure. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, reading this book, uh, the wealth mindset, uh, kind of the first three things you talk about is self-observation definition of aim and then detachment. Um, for people listening to this, not necessarily for someone who's already read this, but what is self-observation? Like, what does that really mean? Uh, if you could explain that to our listeners. Of course, yes. Yeah. So self-observation means how do you really feel? If you, you know, we have the person that we present to the outside world and that other people might think that we are, but then there's our, our self-talk, our inner talk. And when you, uh, self-observation means you're observing how you are talking to yourself. So not how you're acting and trying to get people to react to you, but how you're reacting to yourself. So when we observe ourselves like this, most of us will realize that we're not 
like, like, like we, we treat ourselves like shit. Like our, negatively, we are full of negative ch- self chatter and just bullshit most of the day. Um, a lot of the time. Um, so that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I kind of think of, you know, maybe we wake up every day and it's like, what's the, what's the first story or first thing you're saying to yourself? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of times, like, I'll be honest, like there's a lot of times where I wake up and I'm like, you know, oh, I don't have enough of this. or you're worrying about money or you're worrying about, you know, something. Um, and so self-observation is like, hey, you're observing the inner state of who you're being, not the external state. Um, you know what I mean? And, and I think a lot of times what you're saying is self-observation is really about are you in alignment internally with how you are showing up externally? Um, and really because what we present to the external world is not usually the same thing that's going on in the internal world. That's exactly, I, I completely agree with you. And, um, you know, there's a, a Buddha saying monkey mind. Um, and it seems like that's what a lot of us have most of the time. It's, we feel like, it's like we're almost two different people. Like there's, there's again, this external person that's going through their life and seems to have their act together. But internally, you might be full of self-criticism, self-doubt, just seemingly random negative thoughts about yourself and others and self-judgment, judgment of others. Um, and when, you, when, that's, when that's not there, as you just said, but when you basically, when you feel good, you'll notice that, or when you feel relaxed or in the moment doing whatever it might be, um, you'll notice that that self-criticism is, is gone. And instead right. you're, you're actually living the life that you feel like you should be living. Right. Yeah. You just kind of feel like you're in alignment. Everything's kind of flowing. Uh, you know, I always tell people, it's like, it feels like a flow state. They're like, well, what is just be in the flow? It's like, well, when your inner reality matches your outer reality, that's when it feels like that. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and it then, sounds very simple, but it's not yeah, easy to do. Yeah. It's, it sounds simple and you know, it's said simple, but yeah, like you said, it's not easy. So what is definition of aim? What is, what does that mean? So definition of aim, um, basically means what do you want? And again, not what you're the external you, what you tell other people you want, but what do you really want deep down? You know, who, who, who do you really want to be? What do you really want to have? So definition of aim is, first of all, knowing what you really want. And then making it so that you don't lose focus of that. Um, we get swayed one way from, you know, and the other, again, all the time. And, and people lose focus of what's really important to them. For instance, you might say, oh, I want to be, um, a loving, responsible individual, which seems like common sense, but then we find ourselves going about our lives, losing, just just totally losing our focus and not actually being aware of th- that we've lost our focus of that. Right. And so, again, through self-observation, we realize that we do not always hold true to our, our aim. So you want to, you know, you want to know what, what you want. Sure. So, so let's dive into this. So definition of aim would be, you know, maybe a target that's often a distance that says, Hey, this is what I want. This is who I want to be. And we're talking about, you know, I think one of the things that, that people often associate this with is, Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to, you know, change my hair. I want to change all these external things about me. But definition of aim is like, hey, who do you actually want to be, you know, as, you know, maybe a husband, father, you know, wife, you know, whatever, wherever you fit in there. But it's like, it's about who you want to be, not about what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, this is, this can be interpreted as I do want to lose 20 pounds or I want to make, you know, 
X amount of dollars more next year. And it, it can be interpreted superficially that way, but that's not what this is really about. This is deep down, you know, we can say your spiritual core or fundamentally, who do you want to be? Um, and, you know, it's like the answer doesn't have to be amazingly profound. I mean, the answer might be, for, for instance, like for me, it's very important to have a sense of peace about me and to be a peaceful person and, you know, a love, like a loving husband and father. That's very important to me. That, and that's something that, you know, I, I, my aim is there every, every moment for that or, or hopefully is. You know what I'm saying? Where it's, it's, I don't, it's something that I do not want to lose focus of. Um, so it, it's not like my definition of aim is like, well, I want to be a, you know, a loving husband. So I'm going to do this, 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 that can be part of your day to day life. But definition of aim is, is meant to be who deep down who you are and, and touching that, being able to actually feel that in your life every, every day as you go about your day. Um, yeah and it's kind of it sounds kind of like the steering wheel yes of like hey this is you know the death this is the place i'm aiming for and want to go in the direction um and that's kind of your steering wheel is having that defined yeah that's a that's a great metaphor so okay and then there's this other thing called which we'll kind of come back to this definition of aim and, and goals and, and things like that but what is this detachment um, that you talk about in the book? Yeah, so what we see through self-observation is what we have just discussed, where we notice a lot of negative self-talk, a lot of negative inner behavior and inner judgment about ourselves and others that if we're not aware of it, if we're too busy focusing on external things, we might just gloss that over. But if we focus through self-observation um, and see that those thoughts and that negative you know, cycle of, be of inner behavior is there, we then are able through uh, different techniques, different meditation techniques, which we'll go over to detach ourselves from judging ourselves for, from having those um, thoughts. In other words, we can beat ourselves up for having those thoughts, but beating ourselves up is only going to get us to a certain point. And we want to transcend where we currently are. We want to actually change. And if we just beat ourselves up for having these thoughts, it's hard to transcend what, what we are. So by uh, detachment, we're able to um, look at ourselves in a new way and transform ourselves via um, feeling about ourselves in a new way, which is something that, um, again, we'll discuss in more detail, I'm sure, as we go along. Yeah, so I kind of think of detachment as maybe, you know, a thought that I can take away uh, from me or from my, you know, where my inner state and look at it, you know, and be detached from it, not have it kind of consume me or, or become who I am. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can have a, a single thought like, um, like, oh, shoot, I should have thanked that person that was so rude of me. Right. And we can have that thought. And then it can just snowball out of control. It's like, oh my God, why didn't I thank that person that, you know, I, I'm, I'm such an asshole. I always think this, I always do stuff like that. And before you know it, you're just going off the rails. While if you have detachment, you can notice, oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't thank that person as I should have. And just notice that for what it is. And then go about your day and go to the next thing and still have that aim of being who you want to be. And if you're able to do that, it means next time you'll, you'll probably thank the person because you're able to detach yourself from your overly emotional, overly inner, inner chatter, negative, you know, hot box that you have inside yourself. Sure. Um, you see, that's not the real you. That's the small you. And you're, you're touching the bigger you when you detach yourself from that. 
So, you know, looking at this, these are kind of the three pillars in the book, correct? Yes. I mean, those are, that's Neville's philosophy in a, in a nutshell, I would say. Um, and there's so much in each of those concepts. Um, it's very difficult to explain his philosophy, like in terms of just three pillars, but um, it's, a, it's a good starting point for sure. You just say maybe for the book, if, you know, if you're listening to this, it's like, hey, here's the three pillars the book kind of starts out in. You know, if you read any of his other work, you can dive into this for forever and probably like continue just to like never find that can end to it. Yes. The way that I, I found out about uh, Neville Goddard was actually, uh, I, would, I've been, I studied a lot of Joe Dispenza's work. Mm -hmm. um, I remember getting on a message board one time and someone said, hey, a lot of the work he's doing is actually Neville Goddard's work um, and very similar. And so I started kind of going down that path um, and getting into this world of metaphysics uh, but what is the real purpose of metaph metaphysics? I mean, that's a big question, right? But on, on a practical level, it's transforming who you are from within and then seeing external results naturally happen because you've transformed who you are from within. Okay. So... Um, so uh, one of the things that, that maybe if you're a listener is like, well, what does that mean? That means, um, you know, changing from the inside out instead of the outside in. Would that or transforming? That's, yeah, exactly. It's changing from the inside out as opposed to the outside in. Now, when we, we've, you know, most listeners have probably heard of something like that. Right. What's so interesting about, um, deep metaphysics, if you want to call it that, which Neville is, is that he means that literally. We're talking about literally be, being able to change it, your thoughts and your feelings to such a degree that you can do very seemingly very little external work or change externally and still naturally over the, uh, uh, sometimes a relatively short period of time, see just crazy things happen in your life. Um, it's not magic. It, it's just when you work with yourself, if you can actually change how you feel and face the world in a more positive light and um, deal with that inner negative self-talk in a new way where it's much more detached and you're much more able and capable to feel positive um, on, a, on a more consistent basis, in other words, if you just focus on feeling good more often, if you can succeed in feeling good more often, I basically guarantee you that you will have a lot of positive external change occur for you as well over a relatively short period of time. Yeah, and I, I've done uh, naturally a, a lot of things where, you know, I would take even a year and a half ago, we moved to California. I had, uh, me and my wife, we had, uh, two personal training facilities for 12 years. And at the end of 2017, I made a, a goal of, Hey, I want to sell uh, my gyms and move to California. And at the time, you know, our gyms were in a great position. Um, but it was kind of like, I could see what it would be like to not only live in California, live by the beach, the weather, you know, kind of feeling into all of this. But what was really crazy is I didn't really do anything from a standpoint of, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that for about two months, two and a half months. And then it was kind of like as things just started to kind of flow and naturally happen, um, I would say like I didn't do a ton of stuff externally to make it happen. It was like I could just – envision what it would feel like I got the feeling I got the emotion and then I got my wife in it too because we're like hey this is what we want to do and so the reason I want to explain this is because a lot of times people set goals and set outcomes and it's like well I want to lose the 20 pounds 
but they don't actually feel what it would be like to lose the 20 pounds first. And that's where I, um, I think people really mistake is like they want something to change, whether it's externally or whatever, but they don't actually go to, well, what would that feel like? Or what would the emotions be when I made that change? And then they can focus on that versus focusing on losing the 20 pounds, you know, every time they put food in their mouth, because generally it's like, well, I'm fat, I'm out of shape, you know, and that's what they focus on versus focusing on, well, what is it going to feel like when you lose 20 pounds? Well put. That's exactly right. I mean, when you think about losing 20 pounds, it, it, does it feel does it feel good? Does it excite you? Does it get your imagination thinking about, Oh, I can, you know, I feel so much better now when I, you know, when I'm outside moving around, does, does it stoke you? You know, does it, does it just charge you up? Um, or does it seem like a drag? How the heck am I going to do this? And every time you're eating, you have that negative monkey mind self-talk that we were talking about. Which one is it for, for most people? It's, it's probably their, the latter, you know, they're, they're not, they're not imagining and thinking good stuff. They're thinking about the negatives and how hard it is to do it as opposed to how joyful it would be to, to, you know, to have that, to, to be 20 pounds lighter or whatever it may be. Yeah, that's awesome. So let me ask you this, like what is maybe one thing that you've used this on to create in your life? Mm -hmm. It would be like, man, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I felt, you know, into yeah um you probably had a lot but like what is one that really sticks out to you one that sticks out to me because it happened relatively quickly after i found neville's stuff was uh, like i said i really wanted to transition out of real estate and i had been i wouldn't i'd say struggling is a strong word but i, I had been having difficulties doing it for a number of years i've been trying to do it for like i don't know at least five or six years but I had been, I just, it seemed like it wasn't actually happening and I was working a little bit less, but I still was in it. And when like, I, I used to work a lot in the summers and it would just drive me, you know, like I, I would just, it would burn me out. That's what it comes down to. Um, and so shortly after I encountered devil stuff, I, I, you know, I started doing the, I made the beginner's mistakes, I guess you would say with Neville stuff, like imagining having more money. Um, so I didn't have to work in real estate. Right. And, you know, you can see that immediately that it's what we were just talking about, about losing 20 pounds. I was thinking about what I did not want, which was working in real estate as opposed to using the money in a, in a way that I would actually enjoy. Um, so those were some initial mistakes I made, but at the same time, and when I figured out that I was doing that, I was able to focus more on what it felt like to have more free time and more time to myself and being able to relax and enjoy what I was doing it was very or relatively easy and became easier to evoke feelings of, you know what? I have a lot of free time. I'm, I'm, I'm now doing more of what I like to do. I feel fulfilled doing what I'm doing. And, um, I'm trying to think of the timeline here. Exactly. Um, 2014. Yeah, I think that within like four or five months of encountering Neville stuff, I never worked in real estate again, except to um, sell a property I owned and then to buy a property that my wife and I currently live in. But I stopped, I mainly did, uh, rented apartments to people and I never rented apartments again. I think within four or five months of encountering Neville stuff, never had to go through that BS again after trying to get out of it for like I said, five or six years. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, you know, what you can do with that power. Um, you know, and just to kind of back up what you said, like one of the things that I see as a coach is a lot of people know what they don't want. Um, and they can, they're very clear about that, but they actually don't know. Like you said, it was like, it's like, I want more money or I don't want to have to do real estate because that's knowing what I don't want, but they never talk about the opposite. Well, what would it feel like to have more free time? Cause ultimately that's what you really wanted. Exactly. And so there's this concept that we talk about. It's like, Hey, here's what I don't want. 
but then you're not really clear on what is the feeling because the feeling of what you do want and you envision and what you want is actually what you're saying is I don't want to do real estate, but it's like, no, what would it feel like to have more free time and do what I actually like doing? Um, and those are things that the feeling actually comes out because the other feeling is, oh man, I got to go to real estate again and, and do this and you're right. regretting it. And so you're just getting more of that. And it's kind of like you're stuck in a loop. Yeah. I, you know, I like to, a phrase I like is, um, it's like lackful, like, like a, a feeling of lack, you know, um, that's kind of a common phrase. I feel like in metaphysics, you know, a great phrase. It's like, we live in a lackful culture and we're trained to think in terms of lack, what we do not have, what we do not want, as opposed to, you know, an abundance mindset, a wealth mindset, which is, what I do, what I do have already, first of all, which is very important, and also what I'm going to get more of. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's switching it from a feeling of lack to a feeling of abundance. Neville's probably his most famous book is a short book. It's called Feeling is the Secret. And Feeling is the Secret is a pretty good summation. You want to talk about principles, you know, like that, that's a very simple, you know, pillar. Um, of all of this is feeling is the secret. I always like, I tell people when I work with people feel good, not bad, you know, just focus on how you feel on the inside and feeling good more often. And, um, outer results usually will follow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And you know, this is, uh, it's super simple stuff to talk about and to be like, Oh man, like just feel you know, feel the abundance or feel, you know, what you do want. But like, if you're stuck in a feeling of lack all the time, because that is what your external reality is giving you feedback of, uh, people have a really hard time shifting that. Um, and so what is maybe a way somebody, you know, could do that or that you've seen that someone could do that? Yeah. So this is a, I mean, you know, a, a great question and there's no one answer here. Okay. So it's not like I'm, whatever I say is, is just my opinion. Um, because there's so many ways to make a shift so you can feel better internally. However, even though there's many ways, it's finding what works for you. Um, some of my, I'll go over a few of my favorites if you want to right now. Um, yeah, just do, you can do one or two, just simple. Things. I, I would say this, my, if you can learn how to feel more relaxed more often, if you can do more things that truly, truly relax you, then, then you will make that shift faster. Okay. Um, I wrote a, a guide talking about Neville's material called relax more, try less. And the gist of that guide basically is that if you focus on feeling more relaxed and feeling good more often by just feeling relaxed, other good things will happen to you. And how do you relax? How do you feel re more relaxed more often? That I can't tell you because people feel relaxed in so many different ways, but you have to figure out a way to feel more relaxed more often. And, and often it's obvious. There's obvious ways of doing that. It's just actually doing it. So, uh, you know, what are some ways that I'll, I'll go through some ways that maybe I've done that, but what are a couple ways you've done that? Sure. So some, I'll give, I mean, listen, there's, so for instance, I, I could give you, um, Stereotypical answers like, uh, you know, breathing and meditation exercises, walking, you know, swimming, working out. But some of the hacks that I think I've, that have worked best for me, um, the best hack I know of to feel better quickly and to be able to relax your body and your mind is to be totally physically active and playful for a few minutes. If you do that, um, you like your, your thinking cannot catch up to your body when you get very active and playful. Um, th that's, I was into this concept before I got into Neville. This is, I have a, you know, if you want to watch me doing this stuff, you can go to stopbeingserious.com. Um, 
I've, I've got, you know, many videos of me acting crazy and explaining how physical movement can make you quickly feel more relaxed. Um, another great hack is talking out loud to yourself. Um, in other words, speaking out loud to yourself so that you become aware that the inner voice that we were talking about that is self-critical is actually bullshit. If I speak out loud to myself and I'm like, you know what, Tim, you're sure acting like an asshole right now. What the hell's wrong with you? This is absolute bullshit. And if I speak out loud to myself like this for four or five minutes, there's going to be a shift and all of a sudden I'm going to calm down internally. Right. And, um, that's another phenomenal hack. And then another hack that I like is simply, it's a form of meditation, but it's basically where you, you know, you get very, very relaxed and then you just watch your thoughts and you don't judge your thoughts at all. And that's something that we were talking about in terms of detachment. Um, and one of the tools that Neville talks about a lot, those are, those are all hacks um, that I like, but to, you just got to do what relaxes you, Jesse. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, you can give some examples right now too, but it, everybody's different. What relaxes them? Sure. So yeah, and I think I think the easy stuff is, you know, meditate, pray, you know. But sometimes we're still doing that from that place of lack. Yes, uh, right. Not necessarily shifting us, and so the the thing I like about physically moving is like movement gets you out of your head and into your body. Uh, because it has to become aware of your body and so you start stop thinking about stuff and calculating stuff and you just start you know kind of like moving through life um, which is you know super important and, and a lot of times like I think we become unconscious that our body actually knows the answer um, that our mind doesn't uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. I totally agree. I assume that your body always knows your an the answer, and that your mind never does. <laughs> That's a pretty good philosophy to have. Yeah. Uh, so, but you can't get the answer if you're always in your head. Right. So you you, you got to figure out a way to get out of your head. And what we're talking about physically getting active is again like a it's the it's the best way I've found to quickly get out of your head because. Your mind has no choice but to shift. Your thinking has no choice but to shift if you get very physical, as I know you're aware of because you've done a lot of you know, stuff that involves incredible physicality. Um, and that shift is all you need to change things. And, and you can make that a, you know, a, a habitual thing. Um, you can make sure that you get to that place every day. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. So uh, there's one thing that, that there's one thing I want to I want to quote from the book um, and we can talk about this but it was you must stop spending your thoughts your time and your money everything in life must be an investment um, you know that that single statement in the book was probably one of the most powerful statements that I read throughout the whole thing I mean there's a million gold nuggets but that thing was like oh my gosh like this is kind of the secret uh, sauce uh, to me behind the book. But like, can you like dive into this a little bit more? Yeah. I mean, if you want to get deep, which we're trying to get here, and quite frankly, you're not reading Neville if you're not trying to get deep within yourself and, and do, do some work on yourself. Um, you realize through self-observation through noticing how negative and lackful a lot of our thinking often is, you, you learn how basically how wasteful we are. See, we like to think of ourselves as being like a, you know, a, a good person, a solid person, a helpful person. But by observing how we actually think and how prone we can be to negativity, you realize we're actually wasting. Never would say we're spending. Okay, so we're instead of by buying into our negative self-talk, we we waste away our lives. That sounds dramatic, but it's it's true. I mean, unfortunately, the truth is that we we get just stuck in this cycle of crap when we buy into the negative feelings and thoughts we have. While if we 
are able to detach ourselves somewhat and step back and work with this negativity that we might feel in a new way and transform it and transcend it by focusing on what we really want, by focusing on the abundance in our life and what, and what we can also have and, like I said, already do have, that's investing. And if you view your life every day from the paradigm of am I, am I spending right now, am I wasting, or am I investing? Am I becoming a, a, a positive, you know, better person on a practical level? Or am I just kind of, you know, kicking the wheels? If you ask yourself that question as you go through your day, um, it can be very beneficial. It sounds like it's been beneficial to you. And, you know, I know it's been beneficial to others. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to do one thing. Like, I'm going to give everybody kind of an altar call right now uh, on this. Like, think about in your life right now, uh, you know, whether it's when you wake up, whether it's on your way to work, whether it's, you know, when you get home at night, uh, you're at your office in this moment, and I, am I spending or am I investing? Um, and that's really like the question you ask yourself. Um, because what it does is it kind of pulls us out of, you know, well, shit, I'm, I'm worrying about, you know, my spouse or I'm, I'm feeling lack about, you know, my bank account or I'm, you know, maybe I'm thinking about the cookie that I'm not supposed to eat at the office. And, and so these are thoughts of spending or the thoughts of investing is, man, like, you know, I, I love you know, being with my kids, I'm down playing with them when I got home or, or this morning I made sure I kissed my wife or gave her a hug or, you know, it, I, I went out and, you know, was looking at ways that I can, you know, communicate with my clients and really give them value. And so those are all different ways that we can either spend our time or invest our time. Uh, the choice is up to us. And every moment or every second is that choice. And, you know, where I really believe where we, you know, may not be where we want to be in a certain area, like it, it could be your body, it could be your fitness, it could be your marriage, it could be your business, is chances are that we've spent or been spending more time in lack versus, hey, if you look at a place in your life where you're exactly kind of, or you're at least on the path of where you want to be, chances are you've been investing in the right places on that side. And, you know, that's, that's a, that was a really distinct thing for me in the book was like, okay, well, how deep can you really take this? You could take this anywhere um, and use it kind of as a mirror. Yeah, you really can use it as a mirror. Um, I would, I would add um, a helpful tool for me with this has been that I like to ask myself throughout the day, how, you know, how do I feel right now? Do, again, do I feel good or do I feel bad? And like maybe you, you – like I, I like to use a, with people like a simple number rating system, like, like five being really stressed and one, one being really feeling really good. And, you know, you can be two, three, or four as well. But just, you know, like, how do I feel right now? Am I a one? Am I a three? Am I a five? And if you just become aware of how you feel, you become aware of, of whether you're, you're spending or investing. Because when you, when you feel good, it, which is probably like at a one or a two, like you just are, you're in the flow, as you said. And it, it, it seems like it seems like natural, like the way life should be. You don't second guess yourself while when you're at like a four or a five, the stress is there and it's just you it's the, la the your sense of lack is obvious. You know what I mean? You're buying into that self talk. And I think a lot of the work is just being able to check in with yourself and noticing that. Yeah. It's, it doesn't, you don't necessarily like a mistake people I think make is they come down too hard on themselves. You know, like if you just, I know you're big into habits. Like I, I think a, a, again, a helpful habit is like 
you know, at least three times a day when you get up in the middle of the day and before you go to bed, check in with yourself. You know, where, where are you on, on your scale? Are you spending or investing? Like, am, am I, you know, so I ask myself, am, am I at a one, two, three, or four or five? You know, and if I am at a four or five, I don't beat myself up over it. I just become aware of it. I just, again, going back to these pillars that Neville talked about, I observe it. And just that observation and that awareness makes it so that it becomes easier to get down to those, that two and one level where, where I'm feeling good and where I'm feeling, feeling, you know, feeling a sense of natural wealth and, and abundance. Yeah. And I think once you observe it, you can talk about like that other pillar, which was like, Hey, we can detach from it once we're aware of it. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and I think that's a huge distinction uh, on this also is like, Hey, uh, by us becoming aware, we can, you know, begin to attach from it. But a lot of times I think we get to this place of, oh, no, I can't think this way. And it's like we're trying to run from it all day long, yes. like chasing us versus, no, let's become aware, let's accept it, but let's detach from it and know that that's not who we have to be right now in this moment. Yeah, that's enough. Just, just, being, just being able to do that. Um, it's so powerful. Yeah. You are not that person. You're not that thought, you know? Um, this is kind of what you're doing, but it's not who you are at your core. Yes. So yeah. It's and it's also, be it becomes funny too, because you realize how like volatile are and how fleeting a lot of these feelings are. Like we can feel like shit at like 9 AM in an hour late and be like, you know, I was saying, you know, like a five on the scale, really stressed out. And an hour later, you might be down to a two or a one. And it's like, you know, if you become more aware of that, you just, you take your stressful feelings a lot less seriously, you know, is what it comes down to. Like, well, uh, you're able to detach from them. Like, I struggle with this for a long time. And the reason why I, I you know, fell back to habits and, and kind of like came out with this habit-based lifestyle because I realized no matter how I woke up, if I did these habits, they, and if I, they, they were investing into me and they would get me to change my, my state. Um, and so that's why like, I'm so passionate about habits because I know this, that, Hey, even if I get up and maybe my mind's like, Oh shit, you know, you're you know, my wife's, you know, she doesn't love me or she doesn't want me or whatever, like the things that we think when we get up or maybe I feel a lack of my bank account, whatever it is, if I invest in my habits, invest in myself in these things in the morning, within an hour, within 30 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm already changing that inner state. Right. And, and that's really like why I created this because I knew that, hey, even if you wake up this way, like it doesn't mean that your whole day has to go like that. It doesn't mean that your next hour has to go like right. this. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what's amazing. And that's so powerful because so many people don't recognize that, that that's a possibility. Um, yeah. So, well, Hey man, I, I appreciate you being on here. Uh, do you have any last words for anybody? No, I would just say, you know, again, to be a broken record, um, I really recommend doing your best to feel good more often. <laughs> Allow yourself the gift of, of feeling good more often. Figure out a way to feel to feel good because you deserve that. Um, and if you feel good internally more often, that's not you being like a lazy or you know a slothful person. It's the opposite of that. Inner work is a real thing, and it will it will lead to outer results. Um, but the outer results are really just a bonus a lot of the time because you feel better inside. And that's, that's what life's all about is, is feeling fulfilled internally. And then other good things just happen. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, so how do uh, any of my listeners get in contact with you? Um, if they want to know more about what you're doing and maybe even possibly work with you. Sure. So um, my website is radicalcounselor.com. That's radical, like radical dude. Um, counselor like counselor um, radicalcounselor.com um, you know all of my information is there if you search on Amazon for Tim Grimes um, 
you'll see a bunch of my books and guides as well as, you know, books by Neville that I've edited and, um, you know, stuff that might interest you. Um, but yeah, I'm always people who are interested in this material, um, are people who, um, I love to talk to, you know, if you have a genuine question, um, I, I do my best to, to respond in, in a thoughtful way to, you know, answer your question as best as I can. So radicalcounselor.com. And uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure spending time with you guys today. Yeah. So if you guys are listening to this, I want to make sure I will have uh, a link um, to Tim's uh, website in the show notes and then also any links to his books on Amazon. Uh, so you'll be able to see those. So thank you once again, man, for being on here. Thank you, Jesse. Have a good one. Um, If you guys are looking to connect further with a group of like-minded people, join myself and so many others in the Habit-Based Lifestyle Secrets group on Facebook, where I will be dropping daily habits to help you live to your potential. If you want to be one of our next case studies and begin living this habit-based lifestyle, feel free to reach out to me, jesse at habitbasedlifestyle.com. Until next episode, have a great day.